Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Winning Post, powered by Akash Global Advertising, in association with the Serum Institute of India. Like every week, we've got plenty of news, plenty of action for you this weekend as well. But first, a quick look at the headlines. We take a look at the top contenders at this year's Kentucky Derby, which is in its 139th edition. Across the pond and it's the Guineas weekend at Newmarket. The racing world in shock after the Godolphin scandal came to light. You know, we are shocked and completely outraged by the actions that he has taken. And finally, we meet a horse owner who has just one horse, but his story is a touching one. So being a small time, you know, just a small time entry, then a worker at the race course, and then becoming an owner and winning at both the races, this was a big thing for a small time owner like me. And I am really thankful to all those connected. First up on the winning post, the Kentucky Derby. Like every year, it's traditionally run on the first Saturday of May. So the 4th of May is when the 139th edition of the Kentucky Derby will be run. Our expert Mohit Lalwani brings us the top contenders. Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky is where the Kentucky Derby takes place every year in April. The race that is known as the most exciting two minutes in sports for its duration is the first leg of the prestigious Triple Crown, followed by the Preakness Stakes and then the Belmont Stakes. Run over a distance of one and a quarter miles, this is a grade one stakes race for three-year-old thoroughbreds. Besides the race itself, there are a number of traditions associated with it that have been carried on over the years. And the one that is almost synonymous with the race is the blanket of 564 roses that is presented to the winner each year. The race was inaugurated in 1875 and was won by a horse called Aristides who was trained by Ansel Williamson and had Oliver Lewis in the saddle. It wasn't until 1919 when a horse named Sir Barton won the Triple Crown. And so far, only 11 horses have managed that feat, with the firmed being the last one in 1978. But it's going to be a firm, a firm with Steve Clark that is going to win this 104th running of the Kentucky Derby. Alador is second, believe it, third. Well, this weekend of horse racing is probably one of the most exciting in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, you've got over in England, you've got the 1,000 and 2,000 guineas on the Saturday and Sunday. And of course, in the United States is the most important race of the entire uh, United States racing calendar. And that is the Kentucky Derby, known as the Kentucky Derby out there. Run on the dirt over a mile and a quarter. This year is extremely intriguing for a number of reasons. For the first time in history, you've got the horses, the entrants being decided not on stake money as has been done in the past, but basically based on a number of points that they've accumulated based on their results in a predetermined set of lead-up races. Our top four contenders for the Kentucky Derby are Orb, Verrazano, Golden Sense and Revolutionary. Now, the horses that have the most number of points, let's start with Shug McGay's horse Orb. Now, I remember Shug McGay from the time that I was in the United States back in 1989 when he, when he trained the great easy goer. This year, he's got a worthy favorite in Orb, the horse that won the Florida Derby. I particularly like the way Orb finished off in the Florida Derby because he actually went to the line extremely strong. Many say that it wasn't the quickest pace, but for me, he did enough to prove that he's a worthy contender of the Derby. We're a few hours away from the first position draw, and obviously where he draws will be extremely important. I'd ideally like to see him get a draw of about 7 or 8 where he can get tucked in behind the leaders. You run up the Kentucky Derby straight, the Churchill Down straight for about 400 meters before you hit the first turn. And you ideally like to be well settled in the position that you want to be around about there. You don't want to be too far up on the lead yet. You don't want to be too far back apart from mind that bird. There aren't too many who really come from too far off the pace. Orb for me is my number one pick and a worthy favorite for the Kentucky Derby. Now, Todd Pletcher's horse, Verrazano, is one, according to me, who might be a little doubtful over the mile and a quarter. He did win the Wood Memorial, and to me, that's always been a good lead-up, leading into 
the Kentucky Derby, the Florida Derby, the Santa Anita Derby, and certainly the Wood Memorial to me are the top three races that go into the Kentucky Derby as good lead-ups. He'll be run by John Velasquez, and he was one that I thought finished off the Wood really well. He looked strong, went all the way to the finish, and if he stays, I think he's a serious contender here. He is by a sire called More Than Ready, who, well, if you take a look at his stats, you take a look at his record, he's really better known for throwing sprinters. Will Verrazano stay? I personally don't think so. Now, another one who I think is a doubtful stayer is, well, the one who won at Santa Anita, who won the Santa Anita Derby, and that's Golden Sense. Well, he was another one who I thought looked impressive in the Santa Anita Derby, and he rallied on well to win. His pedigree does, however, suggest that there is some weakness in the mayor's side when it comes to stamina. To me, He's a true contender, no question about it, and he's just below on the points when you compare him to Orb and Verrazano, both of them with 150 points, he has 122 points. The question for me is again about his stamina, and between the top three contenders, and for me these are the top three contenders, I go with Orb. Now one horse is whose pedigree that I do like when it comes to the Kentucky Derby, who has that perfect balance of speed and stamina, according to me, is revolutionary, the horse that won the Great to Louisiana Derby. He's a horse, according to me, that will stay well. He's got enough speed in the sire's side and enough stamina coming through from the dam side. Revolutionary, to me, is a horse who's going to be an exciting prospect for this year's Derby, and certainly if I owned him, I'd be very confident. I believe he's doing very well over at Churchill Downs. He's worked very well this morning, and I think... He certainly is going to be a serious threat in this year's race. There's another horse that I like very much and his name is Overanalyze. Now Overanalyze, according to me, isn't getting his due credit from many of the pundits over at Churchill Downs. His Bayer rating was extremely slow when he won the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby and to me, he's one of the famous five from Todd Fletcher's yard who will be in the Kentucky Derby this year. To me, when I saw him win, I thought he was a horse that just travelled very well. He sat in fifth. And I just loved the way he moved. He's got a very fluid, easy action. Something, according to me, you need when you have to improve your position down that back stretch at Churchill Downs. That's where the race often is won and lost in the last 200 meters or so down that back stretch. And for me, Ova analyzes the horse who has the action to come out and win this race. He'll be at a long price. For me, he's the value for money horse in this yard. This is the most important race of the year over in America. It starts the Triple Crown, which consists of this race, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes. I remember on the few occasions that I've visited the Kentucky Derby, there is absolutely no event, no sport, no horse race like it anywhere in the world. Well, that promises to be a cracker of a race. Now, the Kentucky Derby is rich with traditions. And one such tradition is presenting a garland of roses to the winner of the Derby. This tradition was started when a socialite used to present roses to all the ladies at a post-Derby party. And the founder of Churchill Downs happened to attend one of those. Time now for a quick break here on The Winning Post. When we return, we head over to Newmarket to look ahead to the Guineas weekend. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us here on The Winning Post. In keeping with our tradition now, we bring you the top racing from all over the world. We examined the contenders for the Kentucky Derby in the previous segment. Now it's time to head to the Newmarket, have a look at the contenders for the Guineas weekend, both the 1,000 and the 2,000 Guineas. The 2000 Guinea Stakes is one of Britain's five classic races and marks the beginning of the flat racing season. The race that was first run on 18th April 1809 is a Group 1 race open to three-year-old thoroughbred Colts and Phillies. The 1000 Guineas, on the other hand, is exclusively for three-year-old thoroughbred Phillies and was inaugurated five years after the 2000 Guineas on 28th April 1814. Both these races are run over a distance of one mile on turf.
Well, the 1,000 guineas will be the second of the two classics run this weekend at Newmarket, the headquarters of horse racing over in the UK. And for me, this looks like a straight two-horse race. You've got Henry Cecil's hot snap, who has run just twice in her life and won both her starts. And then you've got Sky Lantern, who actually chased her home in the Nell Gwynn. Three pounds better off placed on the scale from that race to this race is Sky Lantern. And Richard Hughes will be sang sanguine of his chances. Well, taking a look at that race, I had a chance to study it. And I just feel the horse that seems to be more scopy of the two is Henry Cecil's filly. She was trailing at the back of the pack. She came through nicely and just, I thought, came down the Newmarket Hill, going into the bushes and down the dip really well. I thought she quickened better and ran on even better. I think she's a horse who will improve. For me, Henry Cecil will win the 1,000 guineas this year. Now, the 2,000 guineas for me is also a two-horse race and Dawn Approach, unbeaten so far from Jim Bolger's yard. And you've got Tornado from Richard Hannon's yard. Richard Hughes will be riding Tornado. Both have never been beaten. And there isn't really a lot to choose from between the two. I've taken a look at the pedigrees. I've taken a look at the performance. And I'll tell you, it was like splitting hairs. Well, the disadvantage that Dawn Approach has, according to me, is that he hasn't yet reappeared in 2013. He had a very tough campaign in 2012, six races. He won them all, including the Dubai Dewhurst Stakes at Newmarket. So he's a winner here. How's he trained over the winter? Well, that's the question mark regarding Dawn Approach. No such question marks around Tornado because he came out and won the Group 3 Craven Stakes also at Newmarket. Now, the Craven Stakes has always been the best lead up to the 2000 guineas and I wouldn't blame Richard Hughes and Richard Hannon for believing that they are on the best horse, certainly the fittest if not the best. The Guineas weekend is anticipated year after year by all race goers from all over the world. This weekend, however, there is scandal that surrounds the Guineas as well. After all, Certify, which was a top contender for the 1,000 Guineas, was caught bang in the middle of a doping scandal that implicated Mohammed Al Zaruni, the trainer of the Godolphin stable owned by Sheikh Mohammed. racing world has been rocked by a doping scandal of manic proportions when it was found that 15 of Godolphin's 45 horses at his Molten Paddock stables in Newmarket tested positive for anabolic steroids and other banned drugs. Godolphin is the Maktoum family's private thoroughbred horse racing stable. The Prime Minister and Vice President of the UAE and the monarch of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, is the driving force behind the stable. It is one of the world's largest stables with as many as 2,150 horses. Godolphin has over 2,000 race wins the world over since its inception in 1992. Godolphin has been crowned champion British owner eight times and has been champion owner in Ireland, Dubai and Germany 10 times collectively. Dubai Millennium, Hauling and Cave Tara have been the stable's most successful horses, winning 9 races each. At the centre of the scandal is trainer Muhammad Al Zaruni. Muhammad Al Zaruni has been a trainer at the Maktoum family owned stable in Newmarket since 2010. The races he has won include the Ladbrook Saint Leisure at Doncaster last year as well as the Dubai World Cup. The British Horse Racing Authority has now handed him an eight-year ban for his involvement in the scandal and has also banned the 15 horses for six months. Among the horses that have been banned is Certify. The filly was a favourite for the 1,000 guineas taking place at Newmarket on the 5th of May. The scandal has caused embarrassment to its high-profile owner, the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed. The Sheikh is a prominent figure in the British racing circuit due to his investment in the sport both as a bloodstock and racing owner. In response to the scandal, the Sheikh has issued a statement on the Godolphin website where he says he is appalled and angered by the incident and has ordered that Molten Paddocks be shut down. Acknowledging the indiscretion on the part of Mr. Zaruni, Simon Crisford, the stable's racing manager, said, Mr. Zaruni has acted with awful recklessness and he has caused tremendous damage 
to not only to Godolphin but also to British racing and um, of course you know we are shocked and completely outraged by the actions that he has taken. The news came as a shock to everyone in the horse racing industry, especially due to the stable's reputation as one of the world's most successful stables that has prided itself on racing excellence. For Sheikh Mohammed, for Simon Crisford, this is certainly very embarrassing. Simon Crisford is the man who actually uh, convinced Sheikh Mohammed to uh, hire Mohammed Al Zaruni. Mohammed Al Zaruni had an ex excellent. 2011 when Blue Bunting came out and gave him his first classic victory in the English 1000 guineas before winning the Irish Oaks. Moulton Stables has been shut down and they're in no hurry to get a new trainer. What does this mean? Well, interestingly enough, I'd like to compare it to what happens over here in India, for example. Trainer tests positive for a bunch of steroids and he gets banned for eight years. He's clearly misled the inquiry. He clearly knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, it all sounds very much like straight out of a Dick Francis novel. Interestingly, the horses have been banned. They're not allowed to race. And that's very different from what happens over in India. For example, when a horse tests positive for a steroid, the horse isn't banned. The trainer gets punished, but the horse isn't banned. And for me, I think it's time. Taking a leaf out of the British Horse Racing Authority's book, I think our Indian authorities may just do well to go back look at their rules and perhaps strengthen their rules as well because if you can create a deterrent to using steroids which is banned in India it certainly will be better for the sport. With this dark cloud hanging over its head what remains to be seen now is whether the Sheikh continues to endorse the sport and what that would subsequently mean for British racing. That's the international news and previews taken care of. We're going to slip into a short break here. When we return we catch up with a special guest. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Winning Post, powered by Akash Global Advertising in association with the Serum Institute of India. Now here on the show, as you've seen over the years, we've interviewed a lot of people, owners, breeders, trainers, professionals. But our next guest is somebody different. He's an owner, owns just one horse, but he's called Tiger because he epitomizes the passion, the eccentricities and whatever else it takes to make a racehorse owner. Tiger, let's start first and foremost about the fact that you've been associated with horse racing a long, long time. How did this association begin? The story goes a uh, long time back. Maybe I came into the race course at, uh, in the year 1978. I just came along with a friend of mine, absolutely unaware about anything to do with horse racing. And in fact, in fact, the first ticket uh, must have been taken by my lovely friend. Then slowly I ventured into knowing the sport. I learned a little bit about. Then I got an opportunity to work for Mr. Shivar and Company, the biggest bookmakers those days. And I started working as a ledger writer for a few months. And luckily, I found my friend, Jockey Jangir. And those days, you know, he was a champion apprentice jockey and all. And we had a little bit of touch during those days. And I felt that it is a lovely subject to be understood and I moved with Jangir and grew in the race course and slowly starting as a you know small time worker under a bookmaker to absolutely enjoyed my lifestyle as a punter. Slowly I also started venturing into the subject. I became a horse owner and I'm very lucky and uh, very you know like obliged and thankful to all connected because I had my two winners both at Pune race course as well as uh, Mumbai race course being a small time you know just a small time entry then a worker at the race course and then becoming an owner and winning at both the races race course is a big thing for a small time owner like me and I am really thankful to all those connected. I think horse racing is just a wonderful subject and uh, uh, I'm sure that if my son wants to pursue this I would love to encourage him in whatever manner maybe as a punter maybe as a bookmaker maybe as an owner because this is just a fantastic line for anyone to come over and enjoy and I have uh, acquired knowledge and I am very comfortable coming day in and day after and I am also among uh, winners I'm trying to do things on my own and, and I'm very successful. Okay, let's talk about your life outside. You talked about your son and he's totally into racing as well. Mm -hmm. but let's talk about your personal life. So, yeah. 
How, how much of a support system has your family been for you? What do you do outside of horse racing? See, I have been working for Tata Projects Limited as a manager for the last 29 years and my portfolios have changed from project uh, execution into business excellence into corporate social responsibility. I am a chosen and elected uh, uh, regional ethics counsellor and more so that is from my uh, working lifestyle but as a uh, lot many know uh, I am a very well-known popular figure in my community because I've been doing some wonderful charitable noble works I have an establishment I've got uh, a cricket team of my own a football team a volleyball team a throwball team for ladies I encourage people I sponsor them on sports and I've literally built the Sir, Ka Sir Kawaji Jangir Colony Recreation Center which came you know, into my, it's a trust property. It's a non-commercial charitable trust property which came into my hands in the year 99. And I started rebuilding and I started, you know, like uh, it is completely established with all the indoors and outdoor sports facilities, free of cost to the children. Okay, I sponsor it. and I make them play. I've given life to them and I like to promote because I am also a very passionate person towards sports. Being a very big sportsman, I've achieved a lot. Why do they call you Tiger? It all started, you know, uh, many years back that when I came from, you know, I've come from an orphanage and uh, I got an opportunity to play at the age of 16, 17 with, at A Division Kanga League and all and with all, you know, greats were used to play for Pasi Jimkhana. A very small boy coming from an orphanage from a very poor family had got an opportunity. They used to make me fill in the slip positions. Leg slip, first slip, second slip, third slip, maybe face positions and all. And I used to be, you know, like they used to, make me do things wherein you know like only a 16 year old boy can you know be told to do something and i did some marvelous job for the team i have taken some outstanding test level classes catches and those days you know the old people used to have those you know like they used to come and see watch the matches and all so after one catch after another one after another one they said he has got great agility he has got great body language he is too good for the slip uh, position fielding and from there i he is like a tiger, he is like a tiger because of the agility or because of the grace or because of the catches which I took which were mind-blowing test class and they used to appreciate and uh, give acknowledge, acknowledgement for my feats and my deeds and all. That is why somebody, I think the name started, uh, Dinsha and Manchi Shroff's father was a president for Parsi Jimkhana those days, 79 onwards. And he was instrumental in acknowledging and even, you know, like, uh, you know, making me feel comfortable by embracing me and giving this name Tiger. And I lived with that name practically with honor. And I am really thankful because this popularity or uh, what you call the name, fame, acknowledgement is because of certain talents, certain deeds. And I have done it well and I'm thankful to them. And I like the name Tiger because it's really, it's a brand name today. And I like because more, I'm also thankful to you. And I would like to say hello to my forum friends because I really like them. And probably, uh, you know, I wish them all the best. That was the story of one journey and it's time for us to end ours for this week. Remember, if you've missed anything, you can always catch it on our YouTube channel. Also follow Mohit on Twitter at Mohit Alwani is his handle for all his tips. Till we see you next week, may the horse be with you.